God said, if you spill a man's blood, you'll have no peace until your blood's spilled. You said, but pastor, we got the New Testament. I know, get them saved before we execute them. I'm serious as I can be. They need to be saved. We need to get in there on death row. We need to preach Jesus to them, but they still got a debt to pay to society. They got a debt to pay to the one they've killed. They got a debt to pay to God for the innocent blood that they've shed. I want to get them saved. I want to see them in heaven. They need to be in heaven. Jesus forgave the thief on the cross. But our compassion has overlooked the principle that there's a voice in blood which speaks and a voice which cries for the vengeance of its innocence. Personally, I'm tickled pink to see chain gangs come back to prisons. I'm tickled pink to see the move that's starting to take place in states and a bill about to be introduced in Congress where they take out the ice cream machines, the Coke machines, and the TV color TVs out of every cell and they start requiring nine hours of work from criminals every day. Are you with me? He said, well, Pastor, you're a hard taskmaster. Friend, I got a question for you. What about the one they committed the crime against? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Say, Pastor, we're supposed to love. We're supposed to forgive. I believe in it. I love. I forgive. I'll help win them to Jesus. They still got a debt to pay because the Bible said so. And the blood of that victim is going to cry out to God with its voice until they have been avenged. That's part of why this nation is in the turmoil today that it's in, is because from all over this land, there is innocent blood crying out, and the land of the United States of America is polluted with innocent blood. And it's crying to God for vengeance. Are you with me, church? Now, Let's turn all the way back to the book of Hebrews again, to chapter 12, and let's continue to talk about blood that talks. You go home from church tonight, somebody asks you on the way home, or they ask you tomorrow at work, what did you learn in church last night? I said, we learned about talking blood. <laughs> Better have a tape with you so they can get it all. Are you with me? But look at this. In Hebrews chapter 12, picking up in verse 22, he says, But you are come unto Mount Sion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. What does the word of the Lord have to say about the blood of Jesus? The word of the Lord says that the blood of Jesus is speaking better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel cried out, and the blood of Abel said, God, I have been wrongly killed. I have been unjustifiably murdered. Father, avenge me, avenge me, avenge me. And the word of the Lord said that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is crying out unto God and speaking better things than the blood of Abel. Underline the word speaketh. Circle it and draw a little arrow over to the margin of your Bible. The word speaketh is a Greek word that means speaking or talking just as it does in English. But the interesting thing is its usage. It is a present active participle. Present tense, active voice. 
meaning that it spoke once and it continues to speak and it is continuously speaking and it will speak and keep on speaking forever and ever and ever and ever. So what am I saying to you tonight? I am saying to you tonight that the blood of Jesus, the voice in the blood of Jesus, not only cried unto God from the ground at the foot of the cross, but the blood of Jesus is crying unto God today and will cry unto God tomorrow and is continuously crying unto God and is continuously speaking of better things than the blood of Abel. What could the blood of Abel cry to God? The blood of Abel could cry out, God, avenge me, avenge me. The blood of Abel could speak of things of a blood covenant that was cut with the blood of bulls and goats, the atoning or the covering over of sins. But the blood of Jesus, a pure and an innocent blood, no longer speaks just about vengeance, but the blood of Jesus begins to speak about life. Life eternal and the blood of Jesus doesn't speak about the blood of bulls and goats that atones or covers over sin but the blood of Jesus is a pure and an innocent and a holy blood that begins to speak about the remission of sins. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? When Jesus Christ committed to improve on the first covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, and he went before the magistrates and they began to beat him when the blood began to come out of that flesh and begin to fall on that ground every drop of that precious blood started crying with its voice and it started crying unto almighty God and it began to cry unto God I'm innocent blood I'm innocent blood I am pure and holy blood I'm not fathered by man heavenly father you are my father when they crammed that crown of thorns down into his head and beat it down with the reed, the blood that began to flow down his face and drip off onto the ground, every drop of that blood began to cry with its voice and it cried unto heaven and it cried to Almighty God. When they put that cross upon his shoulders and he stumbled on the cobblestone and ripped the flesh from his knees and his elbows, every drop of that blood began to cry cry from those cobblestone streets and cry unto heaven and God as he laid upon that cross on Golgotha and they drove those nails through his hands and they drove the nails through his feet. Every drop of that precious blood that was poured out upon that hill began to cry out unto God. When they pierced his side, every drop of blood the precious blood of Jesus that poured from his body and polluted the land at the foot of the cross and filled that land, that blood had a voice and that voice began to cry unto Almighty God. That voice began to say that day from the foot of that cross, I am your son. I am without guilt. I am without sin. I am without shame. I am innocent. I have been wrongfully murdered. I have been wrongfully crucified. I am crying unto you, Father, for justice. Justify me. Avenge my death. Bring upon my persecutors their justification. And three days later, God answered the cry of his son's blood's voice. And he sent the Holy Ghost into the very part of hell that we call paradise. And he justified him and resurrected him from the dead. And there wasn't a thing that Satan could do about it because he killed him unjustifiably. He had no right to kill an innocent man. 
he had a right to kill those that he'd killed before him because they were fathered by sin, born into sin, and their sins were only covered over or atoned, as we would say, by the blood of bulls and goats. But he had no right to kill this one because this one was a perfect lamb, a sinless lamb, a lamb whose blood was holy and without blemish, a lamb whose blood was pure from the foundation of the world, and God sent the power of the Holy Ghost and justified the Holy One and raised him out of hell. But that's not where the blood quit speaking. The Word says that Jesus then took his blood and he entered into the heavenly tabernacle and he sprinkled that blood on the heavenly mercy seat between the wings of the cherubs and he made a blood covenant with God and almighty man that covenant coming through his blood and I want to tell you something today church that blood is still crying out unto God from the heavenly mercy seat and that blood is saying saying unto God, I have covenant with man. My blood is shed for the remission of their sins. There is no more sin when they come to me. My blood covers it and it's over with. <laughs> you look at that. Look at that right now. The word says that the blood of Jesus Christ is speaking better things than the blood of Abel. I want to tell you something, church. When you sin, and you will, every one of us sin every day. The Holy Ghost wrote in John, 1 John chapter 1, you say you don't sin, you're a liar, the truth isn't in you. You just got so self-righteous, you just think you don't sin. Look at your neighbor and say, I love my pastor. pastor. Said he's been on my toes all day. So I sure be glad when he gets off. But I think it's done me some good. Are you with me? When you sin today, folks, when you come to God as a sinner, and you cry out unto him, Save me, O Lord. He applies the blood of Jesus. I said he applies the blood of Jesus. He doesn't apply the blood of bulls and goats, which has no spirit life, but he applies the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, when you got saved, you may have been a pretty decent person in your own eyes. When you got saved, you may have been an ex-outlaw, murdering, thieving, no good for nothing, biker. I don't know what you might have been. You might have been a tobacco spitting, bull riding, no good, lying, cheating, thieving, stealing cowboy. I don't know what you might have been. You may have been good, you may have been half good, and you may have been no good. But the Bible said when we come to God without Jesus, every one of us are sinners and every one of us are doomed to a life of eternal death because without Jesus there is no life. And he doesn't look and say there's a good sinner, a not so bad sinner, and there's a real bad sinner. We're all sinners and that's all there is to it. He say, yeah, but pastor, I've never lied, never cheated, never stolen. I don't drink, don't smoke, don't cuss, and I don't have any problems with lust and adultery. So I'm a pretty good old boy, but without Jesus, you're still a sinner. Without Jesus, you're still going to hell because your blood was fathered by man. You're born into sin, and there's a thing you can do about it. Are you with me? Until, somebody say until until 